Hello everybody, my name is Julian or Flow Graphics and welcome to Composition for Noobs. Now this isn't just for beginners, this can be for anyone really, there's going to be a lot of useful facts and info in this video and it's going to be super super intuitive, I'm going to draw a bunch of pictures and do a bunch of things so it's going to be really easy to follow along. So I've sort of split up composition into three sort of tiers or sections. Now composition applies for anybody, like really if you're a photographer, a videographer, if you make game design, uh, if you're an illustrator or a painter or anything, anything to do with art, you need to know composition. So I've split this up into flow, which is the rules. Uh, leading lines and negative space. I've also split this into color and focus, which is color and focus And then the story which is the content the implied story also the style and the emotion Now I'm going to go through all of these sections one by one and show you if you master all of these together It's going to make your artwork or whatever you create way way better and you will get really good at composition so let's start with number one which is flow so I'm going to draw these two little scenes here or these compositions and I'll show you how those three elements make up flow uh, which are the rules the leany lines and negative space so if I draw a little beach scene here I'll make a seagull or a bird um, and then this can be the waves and the ocean and a little sunset and some sand pretty simple scene not much to it but it's a nice scene it has a good composition uh, and there's a couple reasons for this. One is it follows the rule of thirds. So if I draw sort of like a checker box, like a dice, you can actually see each one of these points, the bird, the sun, the ocean, it perfectly lies on each of those actually cross sections of the rule of thirds. It also flows nicely with the leading lines. So leading lines are basically where your eye looks and what sort of uh, directions the image guides you in. And you can see it sort of has this sort of pattern where you go around in a circle as you look at it. Where you look at the seagull, you look at the sun, you look back up to the seagull and you just sort of have this nice sort of pattern or the circle. But if I then copy this image and we'll change it and we'll actually adjust the composition a little bit. So I'll sort of erase these little edges here and then draw in a little bit here. We've changed the composition. Now it's further up, the camera's looking more down and the seagull and the whole sort of ocean, everything's right to the top. And this has totally changed those leading lines or lines of action because we no longer have this nice sort of spiral and all this negative space framing the top of the bird and the sun. It's now right at the top of the frame and our, your eyes just sort of want to look up. Everything just points straight up like a pyramid and it sort of leads you outside of the photo. It's not really aesthetically pleasing. It sort of seems a little bit odd because your eyes just sort of naturally want to just go up and look out. Whether on the left, your eyes just naturally want to sort of cycle around and basically just keep in the middle. And that's how composition, just very, very simple thing, um, can actually affect that. Uh, it's just, all I did was just move it up a little bit out of the frame, but then it just sort of offsets the balance of the image a little bit. It changes the lines of action. It um, changes the rules that it leads by. And it also changes the negative space, which is uh, what I'll show you right now. So definitely the sky here is a big form of negative space in this image. Uh, so if I just fill in the sky like that, you can see on the left, there's a lot more negative space than on the right. And this sort of gives the impression on the left image of the negative space is sort of pushing down on all that sort of detailed section on the left, which is, you know, the, the waves and the sun and the pole and the sand and all of, all of that. And it gives a nice balance. We've got this big detailed section and then this big sort of wall of blue that sort of frames the seagull. And then everything else is sort of kept nicely down to the bottom. If you go to the right, there's a lot more section of detail and a lot more sort of foreground that's happening. And it almost feels like that's sort of pushing up. And we sort of lose the balance. On the right hand side, there's too much of that where there's not much negative space. We can fix this, you could sort of color in the sand and try and make that another form of negative space, which would balance it a little bit. Uh, but then if you put in some grass or put in any details, uh, you would lose that negative space. You'd be further adding in foreground elements and details and it would make the image quite busy and there'd be a lot going on. Um, if that's what you want to achieve, that could potentially work, but you need to know the impacts of this and how it actually changes your view of the image because it all matters. Uh, all of this stuff matters a lot. So if we go through these sorts of things now, we've got the rules, which, you know, uh, the Fibonacci spiral is a great rule if you haven't seen that. Also, we've got the rule of thirds. There's a bunch of different sort of rules for photography. I don't like to follow them too much. Saying that though, the Fibonacci spiral is interesting. It's a lot in nature. And rule of thirds is just, it just always works. If you take a photo of a tree and then a little sun, uh, just think about, oh, okay, if I just quickly move that tree and the sun to be on those rule of third lines, it might just make it look a bit more interesting. Or 
If I want the tree to be right in the middle of the frame that's a focus, that's fine too. But you just need to know how that will actually affect your scene. And then also think about the negative space above. If it's just a big blue sky and you've got all of this dead space above the tree in the sun, is that good? Is that what you want? Do you want the viewer to look at all that negative space or should you draw a little cloud up there which can act as a bit of padding for the viewer to look back in? Another thing is with uh, sort of lines of action is you could actually draw lines of action before you even create the image. So here I've just created a couple lines and I'm turning this into an image. So that's supposed to be the Batman signal um, and then we've got some little buildings behind and a little city. So I started with a couple of random lines which I thought were interesting and I made a pretty interesting composition out of that image. So that shows you how strong you can make lines and make them a strong part of your image. And next thing is also converging lines. This is just a little sort of technicality with composition. It's also to do with color as well, which I'll talk about later, but you don't want lines to essentially be sort of overlapping. Like you can see the pole here and the sunlight and the bird and the sun, all of the edges of those are overlapping and it's what's called converging lines. It doesn't look too good. If I just quickly redraw this in a slightly different way, let's say I just move a couple of meters over on the beach so there's a bit more of a gap, it's suddenly it's fine. Uh, but if that seagull was right on the edge of the water and overlapping the sun and overlapping the light trail of the sun, it will look a bit odd. There'll be a lot of things all sort of corresponding on the same point and it doesn't look too good. So think about the rule of thirds, think about the Fibonacci spiral, think about other rules of composition. Also think about the lines of action and how they lead you throughout the image um, and what sort of is appealing to look at. And then also think about the negative space when you're creating photos because negative space is just as important as the actual photo itself uh, because there's lots of different elements that make up a photo. And now that brings us to color and focus. So these are obviously made up of color and focus. I'm going to draw a little box here. Uh, it's always hard to draw boxes freehand. So what's going to be in this box is a composition and I'm going to make two of them. They'll be identical compositions, but I'll change the colors. So I'll let you see as I sort of speed through all this. I'll speed it up and just talk over what I'm doing. And basically, yeah, exact same scene, but all the colors are different. Now, these aren't necessarily good or bad. They're just different and they give very different effects and they change the way that you view the image and they give off also sort of different feelings and, and yeah, they're just different. <laughs> so if we start with the left one, sort of probably the most noticeable part is the converging colors. Just like I talked about converging lines previously, we have converging colors. The cliff face is the same color as the sand, and the guy just happens to be, or the girl actually, just happens to be wearing a, a bluey green jacket, which is the exact same color as the ocean. Uh, the next thing is all of the portion, all sort of the lower portion besides the sky, is a bit of a warmer hue. The green is a bit more shifted towards yellow, which makes it a bit, well, sorry, the blue is shifted a bit more towards the green. Um, we've got some autumn colors with the trees and then we have this blue sky at the top which makes this big divide in color where whether it's on the right it's a bit more sort of uniform there's cooler colors all throughout um, and then yeah we have a lot of these converging colors that just really change the flow of the image now a way you can potentially get around this or sort of alter this is with focus so if I go around and cut out this girl here uh, as good as I can um, actually, no, I'll make it the opposite of that. No, no, no. So what we need to do is if sometimes you have problems like this and you can just tell the person to go chuck on a different jacket or maybe when you're painting or making a character, you'll actually change the color yourself. But if you can't control those things, you can actually change the focus and the position of the composition. So maybe I'll basically just blur the background and that will make the foreground stand out a lot more. Those converging colors aren't as obvious. Uh, and it really just sets apart the foreground and the background and actually changes that composition. Uh, a lot of people don't think of focus when I think of composition, but that's definitely something uh, that is very, very important. And not only focus, but also the saturation of colors as well. So even if we go back over to the right, we have a bright pink dress and it just draws your eye straight to it. Now, I chose pink because it was just a bright color, but another thing to think about is sort of actually color groups. So for example, blue and orange are actually complementary colors opposite each other on a color wheel. And we could make that dress orange instead of pink. But if the sun was orange, maybe there'd be a bit too much orange in the scene. I would really want it to stand out. So I'll actually make it pink, even though technically orange would look the best compared next to that blue. Uh, it doesn't look the best for the whole scene because I want it to be a unique color that's not anywhere else. So there's a lot of color groups and color theory. I've actually done a whole video on color theory if you want to see that too. I'll have the link somewhere on the screen about color theory. 
and color theory definitely plays a big part. Uh, you can also change the saturation of colors. If we just want to change the saturation of that whole background, it will make that foreground stand out a lot more too. Or we could also scroll through the hues. Maybe we might want to make the background a bit cooler and the foreground a bit warmer. There's a lot of things we can do to separate uh, sort of aspects of the image and break it up and draw your eyes to different areas. If you want to draw your eye to one place, make it a lot more brighter and saturated. Um, and then otherwise make it desaturated and dark if you don't want to look at it. And now for our final section, which is story. So I'm going to draw two boxes again and show you how composition and the content within your composition can imply story about it. So we'll draw a super simple scene here, a couple sand dunes, a little person standing in the middle of the sand dunes, uh, and then a sun. Very simple, but it gives us an instant sort of vibe of what's going on. And I'll recreate the same scene in the exact same way, it's that one difference. Instead of the person in the middle, they'll be to the right and they'll be pointing to the left and they'll be walking. So uh, that just sort of changes a whole bunch about the scene and it's just one tiny little difference, but suddenly we have a bit of a story. Instead of just standing there, they're actually moving to the left and you go, oh, why are they moving to the left? Maybe there's a beautiful oasis just over the sand dunes and that's what that person is actually walking towards. And obviously I'm drawing an actual oasis here, but even if you didn't have that oasis drawn, it would actually imply a bit of story. And it was literally just as simple as moving the person over a little bit and making them face one direction. Uh, you, you get a, a totally different story to the scene. So simply moving elements around can change a lot of things about your story. And then if we had that person flipped and walking away, then it's going, oh, instead of walking to the oasis, he's walking away from the oasis. Like, why? Well, why are they doing that? You know, that looks pretty good down there. What's making them leave? Did they have a falling out with the owners of the oasis? What's going on? And suddenly you've created this whole story of possibilities and things just by moving this person. Um, and it, it's really that simple. There's a lot you can do with just simply the positioning of elements to create a lot of stories. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to create another scene, but this time we're going to focus on content. So content, what's in the scene? Let's actually give ourselves a list of content. So we'll have some buildings, we'll have a little car that sort of looks like a cloud, <laughs> we'll have a person, a road of course, and a tree. Pretty easy content, pretty, you know, vanilla I guess. So let's start with scene one. We're going to draw a road. This is going to be, have a bit more perspective I guess, so I want to be a bit closer to this car. I'm really, really bad at drawing cars, so yeah, give me a bit of, um, yeah, be nice, <laughs> be nice. So here's going to be my terrible car and it's going down the road. So we don't really know if it's moving a lot, I guess from this perspective and from the angle it makes you think that it's sort of racing down the road really fast and it's giving this this story. Uh, it's simply just by that one little thing, just by adding a bit of perspective, you're at the front of the car, you're sort of down low, it gives story. Okay, it may, it's a race car, it's got a spoiler, so it probably is a race car. We've got a nice happy driver, there's our person, let's draw in our buildings, let's draw in our tree, and bam, we have a scene with that content. Now on the right, I'll follow the same line of action, I'll actually f copy that from the left hand side, and the same sort of perspective, but then I'll take the camera out and actually lower the perspective. So the same angle, but then I've lowered the perspective and sort of zoomed in, like I'm standing on top of a building looking down at the same scene. And although it's the exact same content, uh, I've moved the driver, so he's standing on a wall now instead of in the car. Um, it's the exact same content in almost the exact same layout, but you can give a totally different story with the same content. And this is all about composition. So instead of a race car driver driving down the road and it could be some tense action scene, Maybe on the right, this could be an opening scene for a shot. So maybe this is a movie and you're actually trying to get a bit of an idea of what's what the city's like. And it starts with this guy and he parks his car at the front of a cafe and then goes in and has a coffee. And this is basically your opening scene to go, oh, okay, he's in a city, he's standing next to his car. Um, and, and this is what it looks like. There's not a ton of sort of style or emotion. It's a pretty standard scene. But now what we're going to do is actually change the implied story and change a bit of the style and the emotion of this right hand image by the use of color and shading. So I'm going to go for a bit of a stylistic approach. Uh, I'll follow sort of just a dual tone color scheme and let's say it's going to be sunset. So there's going to be big shadows cast by all these big buildings and the person sort of standing on the wall half in shadow, half in the light. And the part that I want you to look at in the scene is obviously the person and the car. So that will be in the light and then the rest of the elements will sort of be in shadow and the sunlight's casting this you know, nice orange light over the important parts. And this is how I'm using color to sort of direct the person to look at what I want them to look at. 
I'm also using it as just a tool uh, for my color scheme because it looks cool for the color scheme, these sort of opposing colors with the, the greeny blue and the, the orange. And it gives a bit of a stylistic approach. It's going, oh, okay, suddenly it's sunset. It changes the story. Suddenly we have a bit of a stylized sort of art style for this image with this sort of dual tone effect. And it creates a whole different story. Now it could be sort of like a sci-fi movie. Um, and it just, yeah, it changes a lot simply just by changing the colors. And then if you go back over to left, let's say we'll make the car pink, uh, make it, you know, have green wheels um, and basically make it a bit more bright, a bit more punchy, a bit more sort of different color scheme. But then we go, okay, I still want the car to be the center of attention. So let's make all of the background a bit desaturated. Let's make the, the road just simple gray colors. We won't make any sort of bright colors in the road anywhere. Uh, same with the buildings and the tree and everything. I'm just going to pick some standard sort of gray, sort of browny colors for the buildings. Um, paint, make that one just a bit lighter color. And then also for the background, I'll just pick maybe like a blue, something like that, just sort of a dark desaturated blue because we want this car to stand out. We want this car to be the focal point of the image. The rest of it is just sort of, it just sort of sits in the background. You might not even look at it. So there could be a chase scene in a movie. And although these two images have the exact same content in them or almost the exact same content, the left, all you really focus on is the car and that's all you're thinking about. And then on the right, you're thinking about this whole scene and you're thinking about the story behind it and the time of day. And then the left, you're thinking about, oh, how fast is this car driving? What's he driving to? What's he driving from? Oh, that's a cool car, I like the color of the car. It makes you think about totally different things, about the colors, the style. It implies totally different storylines, but they all have the exact same content. And that's how much you can drastically change your idea on imagery just based on the composition and what the actual content is within that composition. So before you leave, I've got one final challenge for everybody watching. I'm gonna draw this quick scene here, I'm gonna speed it up. And this scene is going to consist of three key elements that I've talked about in this video. And I want you to write in the comments what the answers are to this. Now, one of them, it's a bit up to your own sort of opinion, uh, but there's definitely uh, correct answers and not correct answers. <laughs> so the challenge is there is a color scheme or a color group happening within the scene that definitely affects the way you look at the composition. I actually talked about this exact color scheme earlier on the video. Next, I want to tell you, I want you to tell me what the story is. Give me your take on what the story is on the scene. And then lastly, I followed a rule here. I followed some sort of composition rule that I talked about at the start of the video. Tell me what that rule is. Uh, I would love for all you to actually tell me those three sort of key points in the challenge because it will really get you thinking about composition and get you thinking about the world around you and what it's made up of and how to take better photos and how to make better games and take better video or whatever you do. This really applies to any artist, any creative that's making visual work graphic designers, web designers, anything, you need to know composition. Uh, there's a lot more to it, obviously, than what I've just talked about in this video, uh, but that's all I could fit in in sort of a bite-sized time. If you do like this sort of content, feel free to subscribe. I make graphic design videos, I make game design videos, and all sorts of different stuff on this channel. And if you liked this type of video, I've also created color theory for noobs and photography for noobs. So if you're interested in them, click on the screen or go to the description or wherever I put the links and go check them out. So as always, everybody, have a fantastic day. It's been Julian or Flow Graphics here. See ya.